musician. And everything else that I do, I do because music inspires me. And so I love to write, I love film, I love visuals, but it's all because of my love of music. And without music, without the violin, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Music gives me an incredible energy. And so music, in a sense, defines who we are and it defines who I am. And that's really, I think, the answer is it's all about music. The idea of the, of the Berlin Salons is to encourage conversation about music, about the world, about politics, and to have interesting people who have something to say. And he's one of the most interesting people that I know in every sense. So I've been dreaming to get him here, and we're very proud that we finally have him as a guest. Well, thank you. According to the precepts of a governmental plan, and it's an Now we've been living here since 2016, so it's the beginning of the fourth year here in Berlin. Not only is Germany really home, but Berlin is really the place that we feel the happiest. We've lived everywhere, but in Berlin we really feel like we've arrived back home. And that, for me and for my family, is a great feeling. I, I just... I love German culture, and German culture for me is Beethoven, uh, and Mozart, and Schubert, and Haydn. But it's so deeply entrenched in me as a musician. I think you, you can't really be a musician if you don't, if you're not addicted to Beethoven. You know, I mean, Beethoven is just, he, he is the ultimate expression of music, humanism, um, politics, forward thinking, fighting against all odds. I was four years old when I went for my first violin lesson and I wanted to play the violin. I had been surrounded by violins and violinists because my mother had the job as the secretary to Yehudi Menuhin, a very famous violinist. So he was an omnipresence. Um, the violin also was everywhere. Plus all the people that came to his house, the wonderful violinists and students, were playing the violin. So I was seeing violins everywhere. So when I said to my parents at the age of four, I want to play the violin, they weren't that surprised. This violin f uh, found me, which is correct actually, um, it found me because I got a phone call one day uh, out of the blue and a lady said they were looking to make an investment, they wanted to buy an instrument because these instruments, they go up and up and up and it's not really possible for an artist to afford these instruments anymore because the, the explosion of the prices is crazy. 
And um, a lady said, we, we would like to, to make an investment. And if you were interested to select a violin of your choice, we'll buy it for you and you can play it. And that's the most incredible offer. You don't get that kind of phone call every day. So I was really lucky enough to go and look around and try the best violins that I could find. And this violin is a Guarneri del Gesù, 1742. Um, it's called the Ex Lipinski, named after a very famous violinist um, called Karol Lipinski. He was a great virtuoso in the 19th century. And he played on this instrument. And this uh, family, they bought the instrument for me and they let me, they l lend it to me. The interesting thing about this instrument, if you, the, the most famous violin maker probably is Stradivari. Almost everyone knows the name Stradivari. Not so many people know the name of Guarneri. And Guarneri was in, a, in fact a student of Stradivari. He worked in his workshop. And Stradivari was very famous in his lifetime. You know, he, he was very rich, very powerful. Everyone knew him. But there were many people working for him or close to him who'd never managed to get that amount of success. And probably the most interesting is Guarneri. And Guarneri died penniless, uh, unknown. And one says he didn't really have time to finish the instruments perfectly. If you look at a Stradivari, everything is perfect. The interesting thing about this violin, if you look at it, is it's not perfect. If you look at the F holes, as we call them, you can see that it's not completely round. The same thing on this, which means he, he worked quickly because he didn't have time to do anything else. And as a result, he came up with a, an instrument which is very different, it's very dark, it has the most incredible sound. Um, very powerful sound, but also you can play very softly. And it's just, it, for me, it's perfection. And it's perfection because it's not perfect. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love to play this instrument. family came from Berlin and they had to mm. leave Berlin in 1938 mm. so for me it's about going back into, into history more than politics it's about history mm. I think and remembering history and of course there are parallels between you know then and now but I think it's also important not to forget and um, it was an extraordinary year and the idea that we came up with was to look at the year from January to December and mostly, if you think about 1938, you think about Reichskristallnacht and the night of broken glass. But there was seven, eight months before that where every month something was happening. And so my idea was to kind of look at the world events in that year and show how, where the world was moving and using music of the time to illustrate it. Music really defines my life, and um, I'm privileged to get to play music. Music does disturb you, but in a positive way. And at the same time, I think that music at least makes people think, and making people think means they may talk. And dialogue is really the most important thing that we have in this world, because if we don't have dialogue, we're finished, we have war, and we have the end of civilization. I, I wouldn't say that music can change the world, but it can certainly make people stop and think. <laughs> 